Hello, uh, my name is Casey. Um, what I'm doing here today is this is going to be kind of a video diary for me. Um, I'm going to post this on YouTube to one of my channels. I don't know which one yet. No one will probably see this if they do great because that means hopefully they can show this to one of their friends um, or help someone who's going to feel the same way as I do. You see a bunch of these videos on YouTube or the internet period talking about people's struggles and how they feel and they want to relate. Well, I want to relate in a little bit different way. Um, this isn't really a help video. This is more of a me allowing myself to vent. Uh, I don't have many close friends or family that I feel I can talk to about these things. And there are a few that I feel I can, but I don't want to talk to somebody. Um, I'm just one of those people like to shut in. I don't talk to people about what I'm doing. But I've come to a point in my life in which I know that I need to vent or express my feelings in some way, shape, or form or capacity. And as a member of the internet community on a regular basis, be it Twitch, Reddit, yada, whatever, uh... I'm constantly online. I feel like this is the best way for me to express myself, especially knowing this is probably never going to be found. Um, so this will be a video diary for me to vent. I may come back on here on time to time to talk about things that are going on. So in case you do stumble upon this video, let me introduce myself. That way you know what's going on. Uh, my name is Casey. I'm 23 years old. I live in Iowa, Nagahibi City. If you want to find me, find me fine. I don't care. Just don't send a bomb to my house. Nice to meet you. Um... I have been in the workforce for six years. This is something that's going to kind of matter for later on what I'm going to talk about. Um, my first three years in the workforce, I worked at a restaurant, a uh, small little mom and pop place, sandwich shop, worked as a cashier, cook, prep work. I did a little bit of everything there. Um, right now, I'm at my second job ever, um, one I love very much for many reasons. We'll go into that a little bit. Um, but I am assistant manager at a mattress store. Um, I've lived at the spot that I lived for about two years now. I was at my original store that I got hired on for one year. Um, I got promoted, and now I'm living in the town that I am now. I've been here for two years trying to get promoted again. It's going kind of well. We'll go into that later. Um, so that way I feel like you know a little bit about myself. I am obviously a bigger, heavier set guy, guys. You know, I'm a little, I'm a little pudgy. Yay. It happens. Um, but that way you kind of know who I am. Um, let's just hop right into it. Um, like I said, I'm just using this to vent. This is my way of venting. I hope this helps anyone who might watch in time, but help you guys relate to something I'm going through because I know I'm not the only person who feels like this. I want someone else to feel like they can relate without attaching themselves to every other video out there that says, you know, this is all wrong in my life and here's the reasons and whatever. But, um, uh, let's start with the very basics. Work. Uh, why I feel like I'm in half this mess. So, like I said, I'm an assistant manager at a mattress store. Um, I've been with the company three years. I worked in my hometown for a year, and I did decently. Uh, somewhere around a year in, I started progressing and getting much better at my job. Um, what happens is that when you get promoted, you move to another store for get a higher position. We don't promote in store usually. Um, part of this was cool that I got to go see different places and work took me around and for more I get to go see a different part of the country or maybe even move back home based on what I want or what openings come available. Um, I think this is a lot of the reason why I show with a lot of things that I do. As you heard me talk earlier, I don't have any people I talk to, many friends, parents, family, stuff like that, that I relate to or that I can talk to about these things. Well, the reason being part of that is I do live, I do live a little ways away from home, not far. Uh, a couple hours. We're going to put it that way. That way you don't know time just, you know. Um, but I live a couple hours away from home. So I don't get to see a lot of my hometown friends and family on a regular basis sometimes. Or when I do, I want it to be happy. I don't bombard them with the issues and somewhere that I can vent. Uh, with my job, I work a lot of hours. I mean, it's really not a lot of hours. I mean, it's probably like 42, 43. But I work long days, 9 to 8. It's 11 hours. I come home. There's... You know, it's kind of time to wind down for the day. I got four hours. I'm usually up till midnight. Most of that's just trying to unwind and calm down. You know, do stuff on the internet. Play games with my friends. Try and connect while I can. Um, so I feel very distanced from my family, from my friends that I grew up with. Um, and it's a struggle. My best friend right now, you know, I've known him since I was eight years old. I'm 23 now. He's getting married. 
and I'm going to be the best man at this wedding, I feel like I'm never around and I feel awful about it. And like, I'm not involved in most of the decision making because I'm away from home. Um, like tomorrow I have to go get fitted for wedding, for, for the wedding clothes, the attire, the suit and tux. I'm like, well, we're real spiffy. Um, <laughs> but besides that, um, it's hard for me just because I'm away from home. You know, I don't get to spend quality time with my best friend anymore. I mean, we talk on the internet from time to time, but it's not the same thing as being in person, interacting with someone. That's why I think the internet is a struggle for some people and it's an escape for some people. You kind of play best of both worlds. Um, I'm away from my parents and my brother. I love my brother very dearly. Um, I think every person goes through this in their life where they find out there's that one family member or that one friend that they need dearly in their life. I found out that's my brother. Uh, my brother was always my hero growing up and my role model and someone I idolized pretty much in the sense that I copied everything that he did. Um, you'll notice in the background there's a picture of, well you can't really tell right here, but it's Michael Jordan. We're big sports fans. I love basketball. I love hockey. I love football. I love baseball. Um, hockey being my favorite, but I took a lot of that from him. Otherwise I'd be just a nerd and, you know, no disrespect to any of us out there who are nerds because I'm a nerd. If you can see my desktop, it's games everywhere. Uh, but he was one of my biggest supporters. I mean, he taught me how to play sports. He invited me to stuff with his friends. We were involved, and he's seven and a half years older than me. I think he's still the coolest goddamn shit. You know, it, shit happens. And, you know, I'm, it sucks I'm away from him. He's been married about a year. He just had a kid two weeks ago. Nope, three weeks ago today, he had his first kid with his wife. I love that little shit. That's right, I call him a little shit. Cause he cried when I picked him up. But I love that little kid already. I don't want to be away from him. And unfortunately with work, I've moved away and I'm a couple hours away. I don't get to build that bond with him. Like Uncle, K Uncle Casey's not going to be there. At least not for a time. So um, that's kind of hard with work. Um... I won't go into a lot of it, but, um, well, I guess another big point that I'm going to bring up here soon is, uh, dating. Um, I am very good friends with several, several of my female friends, um, back home. I don't, didn't really make friends in the new place that I came because it was supposed to be a temporary spot where I was only going to be here a year or two, maybe three. And we're still on that pace and I'm getting close to getting promoted. I got to iron out some wrinkles in my career, but, um. Everyone that I would date is back home, especially right now. The girl that I dated when I was starting this job just moved back home. We separate on good terms because I just couldn't be around my new job and her school, and it didn't work out. And I could have done better. You know, to be honest, with you, I just could have done better back then. It's been almost three years. And be honest with you guys, I still love her. And she just told us all that she's moving back home. You know, for me, that's fucking awesome. Like, okay. Um, she just finished part of her schooling. She's going to come home and finish schooling. For me, this is a golden opportunity that if I could be back home, maybe I can rekindle a, a relationship. I mean, unfortunately, that's more likely not going to happen just because I don't got game. Um, it's not even about that. It's just, you know, I have my shot. I don't feel like I deserve another one, but so that's another reason I miss home. The people that I want to date or build relationships with are back home and I'm not where I'm at now. Um, this is me, you know, I'll be honest. I got a small guideline off here on my computer. This is all any of the work issues, but it's, I'm kind of talking about everything in one. I'm talking about why work causes this because I do live far away. The hours I work, I get two days off. Um, and sometimes I do travel home and I see people, but I don't get to spend the quality of time that I want to or being involved in people's life. It's like, Hey, I'm going to be home for two days. If you want to do this that day, and you, someone else wants to do this that day. Well, I get to spend quality time with two people for, or a group of people two times, uh, once a month. Cause I can't travel home all the time. That's gas money and something I need. Uh, another big thing with work right now is just not making the money I want to survive. I love my job. I love our company culture. I love the way our company set up that if you work, you earn it, you really do get promoted. And a lot of companies tell you, oh, you can work for it and you can get promoted all you want as long as you put in the effort. No, a lot of companies are not that way. 
thank God for me, I got into a company that believes in integrity, and dignity, and prosperity. You do the job, you're going to get promoted, you're going to be rewarded. A lot of cool opportunities come up in our company. They take us out once a year for kind of a resort getaway type thing uh, where we have classy stay, but afterwards we're in nice places. Um, and we get to hang out, talk to one another, meet all these other assistant managers in the company. And when you become a manager, you go to the one where it's all the managers and you get to make friends and build relationships with those people. Um, and just go have a good time. Our company really does take care of us with vacations and everything, but... Uh, it's hard a lot of times it moves you away from family and that's one of the biggest reasons why people leave our company if they do is because we move and we move away from friends and family friends and family are really people that you truly need unfortunately that's hard when I live back home where I'm from I didn't appreciate what I had I spent a lot of time inside playing games, talking to friends on the internet because that's all that mattered. Well, I go outside. These people have been around me my whole life. Cool story. Oh, you want to go bowling? We went bowling a month ago. Cool story. And I kind of distanced myself off from all those friends. When we talked, we got along, but... I didn't fully appreciate or respect that friendship or value it the way I should have that I now do because I've learned um, same with family I mean I lived with my mom for two years after high school maybe not quite that long I think it was like a year year and a half um, while well, I was figuring out what I wanted to do you know I didn't quite have this career yet I was just about to get into it and even when I did you know, it took me a few months to get out of the house and because my first job was a restaurant job. It's barely minimum wage. I'm working like 20 hours a week. And there's my phone. I'm so professional. Um, sorry, guys. But that didn't pay the bills. I mean, I was just... I was paying for my gas money and insurance for a car that I bought. And that was it. So I lived with my mom. And really, I didn't appreciate that relationship. I'm not always on the best of terms with my mother, to be honest with you guys. And that's stuff that I'll keep kind of in the deep, dark secrets. Because, quite frankly, this is the internet. If someone does find this, I don't want this getting around. Um, but me and my mother didn't always have the greatest relationship. We got along. I mean, we talked. and But we didn't develop a full relationship. Like, we went out to eat together. We went and did some things. But it was never, oh my gosh, I love you, Mom. Thank you for everything. It was a, hey, Mom, thanks for helping me out. Thanks for dinner. I'm going to go play video games now. You know, and which is such a weird mindset for me because going up through high school is like go outside and have fun and interact until like my junior year. And then I was like, okay, let's stay inside. I mean, I switched high schools, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, so I never dealt with my mom. My parents were split. My dad, I didn't live with him just because that's what the judge said. I was going to live with my mom instead. So that's just kind of what happened. Unfortunately, I mean, I love them both, but that's what was decided for me. And then when I hit 18, or like 17, I switched to my dad's and I moved back home because I just couldn't live in that environment because he had a girlfriend and that's part of the family. It was just a little bit too much for me. So, long story short of all this is that the job that I work has allowed me, well, not allowed me to build relationships back home with family. I've neglected those relationships because of it. And part of me is torn a lot of you will come to a point in your lives where you think is your job worth what it costs you I am at those crossroads and there's really three big things here I finally found a career that I love a company I don't think I'll ever get this again I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life or a career or anything I had like a dream job to coach football and I've actually got the offer to do that back home but it wouldn't be the same company culture that I'm in. I love the company that I'm in except for the moving. If I could get back home, that would be awesome. Unfortunately, that door is closed temporarily. Do the my own. Do the my own problems. Um, but it just spaces you out. And I want to be back home to build those relationships. I don't want to leave the company. I want this to be my career. I want to continue to progress and get better and be part of this company and help it grow. On the other hand... 
do I leave my job? I'm clearly unhappy with my social life and my family and whatnot. Um, I love a lot of my coworkers. I mean, I got three guys who I work with in my store, and there's another store attached to ours that I get along with a lot of those guys, but my manager, I think he's a cool guy. He's a little cocky sometimes. Um, I think a little bit uptight and just doesn't learn how to live and thinks mistakes are unacceptable, but we make very few mistakes because we get along and we like to take care of things. My warehouse guy's got a great sense of humor. We've been good friends ever since I moved here two years ago. He's been kind of a rock what I hold on to that makes where I'm living great. And I just hired a new sales guy a few months ago. And you know, he's a pretty decent kid. And we're still getting to know each other. And I have no quarrels, no quims with him or whatever you want to say. But it's not being back home with friends that you've developed a lifetime of memories with. These are people that when I leave the store, whether I get promoted or go back home, I'm probably not going to keep in much contact with except for maybe my warehouse guy because he's cool and you know, it's not for me to drive back home. My manager, I'd be all right with it. I don't know. We're two different people though too. So I'm torn. You no. Know, work, build the company culture or go back home, build my family relationships and go somewhere where I can be more available to do those things. I mean, I can work the same hours, but I'm home. I can make more plans around things. Um, we also work weekends when all my friends do things. I'm the only ones off during the week. I'm off on Mondays, Tuesdays. I work every other day. Everyone else is off during the weekend. So that's kind of a negative, but I've learned to deal with that too. Even when I'm home, I can deal with being working during the weekends. That's something I can easily work around. But the other thing is, like I said earlier, relationships. Uh, like I said, the girl I all proclaim the love just moved back to the town, back home. She's been gone. And we've kind of distanced our relationship, our friendship, because I want, because I'm still in love with her. I'm trying to do right by her and not be a bother. I don't want, to, didn't want to ruin her college experience. I didn't want to say, oh, I'm so needy and I need in your life and try and make it weird and awkward. No, I just want to be a very good best friend to her. I want to be around the talk and have fun when it's acceptable. Um, I think a lot of guys get caught in the fact that hey, you got to try and make it happen. And, you know, sometimes you do. You got to go out and take what you want in this life. But I had my chance. I blew it. And until I earn that chance again, or if I even can, I'm not going to make things weird or awkward for her. But in order for me to make that relationship a possibility, what needs to end up happening is I need to be there. I need to be able to spend time with this person. I need to be able to create memories of this person. I don't want to say rebuild trust. We've never had a reason not to trust each other. But I need to re rebuild that connection to what it was. And so really the two choices I wear, I weigh between is social happiness. Am I happy with my friends, my family, and possible spouses later, girlfriends, or do I take financial security and happiness? The fact that I don't really have to worry too much. You know, I got a job and company that I love. I don't have to worry about going home and finding a job that I hate, but I just do it to pay the bills. I think that's a lot of people's biggest fear is, do I choose happiness in life or financial security and try and find happiness on the side? And it's a hard question because if I want to have social happiness, I have to move back home which will either require me quitting my job or waiting several years to get back home or even moving away further to get back home. It's complicated. <laughs> uh, or do I just stay with the company and build and, you know, next place I go, do I try and build friendships there? But here's my issue. I have social anxiety. I won't even say it's anxiety. It's just me being a little girl. Um, sorry, you know, a lot of people are going to come in here and say, well, Casey, anxiety is a social illness. I mean, mental illness. Yeah, no, it is. I don't have it. Just call me being a little girl. I refuse to go out. I don't know how to talk to people. Everyone I've always talked to, I've had an in with, and I'm very cool with. I don't have to go out and meet people. I don't know how to do it. I'm scared. That's part of the thing with, like, my social life. Like, I want to be back home where I know groups of people, and they can introduce me to other people, and I can grow my friend circle. So, it's like, do I go on with my job and go somewhere else and... You know, just be financially secure and help things work out. Or do I go home, be happy, and then try and find another job that works? 
No, one thing with financial security is right now my job is not paying that well. We're, we're a commission-based job. What we sell is what we what we get paid for. Um, we kind of change pay structure. I won't get into that because then that really gives away what my job may be or how it works. And I'm not trying to badmouth the company because this is the only thing I don't like about them. So we'll go from there. Um, but the money hasn't been great lately. It's it's not really paying my bills. It will be. Once we give a little more time, we'll start paying my bills adequately again. Things will be okay. Um, and if I get promoted, I get paid even more. Obviously, why would you take a promotion if you don't get paid more? But it's just different. It's like the job's not providing for the moment. It will be. And I can guarantee you that it will be providing. Like it can do its job. And as long as I do my job, I get paid well. And there's no complaints. But it's really... Now let's say money is the root of all evil. And I just don't know if I can give up the financial security that I have to go home. Because like that was always my biggest thing is I always had to be the mature kid growing up. Yeah, I was goofy. I was silly, sillier than a lot of my friends. But when it came down to decisions and doing things the right way, I always made the hard, good decisions. You know, get a job, take care of myself, take care of the things that need done be a solid block for a lot of people i a lot of my friends had depression or suicidal tendencies when i was going through high school and i was the guy everyone went to for advice i didn't have many girlfriends in school because i was always the not so gay gay best friend like i think i had three maybe four girlfriends in high school because no one wanted to date me to ruin ruin the relationship that we had because i was the almighty counselor as I called it for fun you know a lot of that took a toll on me and it just still takes a toll on me I uh, was with a friend one night and she tried to kill herself an image I'll never get out of my head Trans takes down a bottle of pills and I tell her to stop and she takes a knife, cuts herself. Thank God she wasn't educated on how to cut herself to kill herself. She cut on her wrists, which is not a great place to do so. At least not when done properly. So, but a lot of that always built up on me. You know, I just, I know I'm just kind of rambling now. Like I don't even know what point or topic I was on, but like, so this is kind of a place for me to vent, but. You know, I have a lot of stress and anxiety build up. And I just, one of my biggest things is I always wanted to help people. But I always had to be the mature person who took care of them. That's where I was, being a mature kick. Yeah, I sound real mature right now. I'm doing my funny voice, you know what I'm saying? But I always had to be a mature person who helped everyone. If everyone had a tough time, they came to me and it was just, Casey, what do we do? Relationship advice college advice school advice and I didn't have the answers for myself sometimes I could only actually any of the time I could only see on an outside perspective when I look at myself I can't see what's going on I'm clouded by my own thoughts my emotions the way things are going and I take that into account when I'm dealing with other people but I can see the whole picture then at least as much as they're allowing me in the sea I was that guy who helped it all took a lot of toll on me because a lot of times I was giving advice to girls that I liked to go date some other guy. Sometimes my friends. And that hurt. But I had to be the bigger person because I understood that I could not date that woman. Either A, because I was too good of a friend to give advice. Or two, they didn't look at me in that way. And that's perfectly fine. But that was hard. I think any kid who went through high school or even just after high school that had to deal with anything like that, they realize what a struggle that is and how bad that hurts to look at that every single day. You know. The last few years being in my job, a lot of times being at work means being mature, trying to act like a manager like I'm told to do, which I can do pretty darn well. I act goofy and I make sure everyone knows I'm the kid at work. I am the youngest person at the place I work. But it's because I want to have fun. And I don't want everyone thinking that I'm just this corporate business guy who goes and does what does what the company bids me to do and I'm a robot. Because I'm not. I have fun. 
I'm here to have fun in life. I love my job. I love my friends and my family. And I want to incorporate them all. It's a struggle. So I guess it takes a lot of toll in my life and I come home at night and I just see that I'm not happy with where I am in life. And a lot of you, if you watch this, are just going to be, well, if you're not happy where you're in life, make a change. Go back home. That's what you keep talking about, Casey. What do I do when I go back home? Let me, let me explain this to you guys. And a lot of you go through the same exact thing. I am not college educated. I went through a semester of college, took three classes. I passed one of them. Not because I wasn't smart enough. I didn't go to the classes. When I left high school, I did not have the mental endurance to continue school. I just, it was boring to me. I was extremely smart. For those of you who know, I got 33, you know what I'm talking about. I got 33 on my ACT. Okay. I was a smart kid. I just didn't try in school because it didn't interest me. I mean, the things I was being taught, I was being taught over and over again. If they were actually expanding my knowledge, I would have went. But I don't have a college degree. The only work experience I have is working in a restaurant for cooking. Please tell me where I can get a good paying job in a restaurant again without a culinary degree. It's not going to happen. I don't have any special skills. I played sports for years. I could go back and coach some little league team for $1,000 a year. Go coach football on a volunteer basis. I don't have skills to help me get another good job. The company I've built up, I have built up a decent pay by acquiring the skills that I need for this job specifically in this company to be successful and they've trained me great. I don't think if I go anywhere else, my skills are going to apply unless I go to another sales company. And I won't do that. And here's the reason why. The company that I work for treats me so well that I feel if I went anywhere else, it's kind of like being a trader, turning my back on that company. I'm scared. What, what do I do if I go home? If I go for a sales job, I feel like I'm dirty. I left my company for another company that does the same thing. Taking the skills that they've taught me and put them to use elsewhere. That's not right. And my computer just black screen. Cool. We're back. So I don't feel like that's right. I'm not going back in the restaurant business. If I went back in the sales, I'd make sure it's far away from doing anything with mattresses or being a true competitor to my company. So where does that leave me? I go find an entry level job or I have to go learn how to do a trade like being an electrician or something, which is not bad, but I'm out of home and like, I don't, I have to be able to pay the bills with something while learning these trades while doing something. And there's nothing out there that I can say that I love except for things to do with sports and gaming. Those are my interests. I guess you give me a little bit with history. I love the civil rights movement, shit like that. Anything you learn in social studies class in elementary or junior high. Love that shit. Don't know why, but I never dove back into it. So I'm scared. Because I feel like at this point in my life, the decisions I make are going to be wrong. Like many of you feel right now. You feel like you're caged in a box. Like there's no right answer. Like no matter what you do, you can't win. You feel like you're stuck. I feel like I either go home and I never have financial security or I'll never have a job like this again. Or I stay here and I lose happiness and my social relationships and the way that I interact with people and I just don't ever feel satisfied. And it hurts. And I come home at night and I sit here and I wallow and I think about this and I let everything build up. It makes me very angry and I don't know how to react to this 90% of the time. I drown it out by playing video games or watching Netflix or YouTube like a lot of us do because we don't know what else to do. The crippling fear. I'm a big guy and I would love to lose weight like many of us our size. Here's the issue. I know how to do it. But I can't because there's so little motivation. And when I go home, I feel like I have this heavy weight on me. What do I do to make my life better? What's the right decision? Do I leave my job to go be happy home? Or do I stay here and be happy financially and hope that things work out down the line? 
those weigh on me. I I don't call it depression. I don't call it anxiety. I call it being a weak mental fortitude. I'd be like, I feel like I'm depressed. Like the world hurts all the time. Like a lot of people self diagnose themselves with depression. It's just stress that, unfortunately, my generation, we didn't learn how to deal with stress well. We were coddled in school, coddled by our parents, instant gratification, continuously, being spoiled little brats. I just, we don't know how to handle it. And when it comes time to make a decision, we need someone else to make a decision for us. And I've never been that kid to let anyone else make a decision for me. So here I am, trying to figure it out, spilling the beans to the world. I feel like he'll look like an idiot, but hopefully no one ever finds this. Hopefully they do. I don't know. This is a common thing. There are thousands of you out there who feel like this. I've talked to at least a hundred of you in my time in high school and just after when I used to help out talk about, by the way, those are just cuts from playing basketball. I don't punch walls or nothing. Don't worry. But I feel like for the hundreds of thousands of people out there who probably feel the same way I do my age, this is a normal thing that we just don't know how to deal with. We were taught, go out, get a good job, be secure. And then the stress of anxiety when our parents is wanting, parents wanting us out the house, which I never really had, thank goodness. But once you're out, you need to stay out. You need to pay your bills. How are you going to pay your bills? Go back to school. All this stuff happens. Or, you know, if you don't want to go back to school, what do you do? You got to build a trade. Well, then you need to get paid. Well, you get the trade and get out. And it feels like we're trapped in this box. I know there's solutions out there that a lot of us just don't see. We don't know how to look for those solutions. We were coddled into this mainstream path to go to college, find a job that works for you and stay within, build and improve. Or otherwise you end up like the kids who get fired and bounce from job to job that doesn't pay well that you're struggling to make ends meet every single day of your life. Those are the two people in our generation it feels like half the time. Either find a nice decent job without going to college and build your way up or you get fired and you keep restarting the process and you get trapped. Or you go to college, you get a good job, or you still end up in that trapped hole. Feels like there's no way out for a lot of kids our age. Because we don't know how to find the answers. School is mainstream to say, go to college and get paid or get a skill. Find something that you love. Sorry, I love sports. I was never going to make an NBA or anything. I was not good enough to play professionally at anything. Football was my only chance, and I did not love football to play it. I love to coach it. I love to watch it. I hate playing it. I didn't finish high school football. I can go get a coaching job, a real one. No one's going to take me seriously. We're trapped. A lot of our generation is trapped because we never learned how to look for things. I literally sit here and I start Googling things, you know, how do you deal with this? How do you deal with that? How do you learn to do these things? What are my options? Because I was never told the options or figure out how to learn the options. I was never taught how to find the answers for myself in life. We were failed by an education system. We were failed by our parents because their parents gave it to them kind of rough. So they caught it less, but their parents had it rougher. They actually knew how to find the answers. And then our parents kind of know how to find the answers. And now we don't. Because each generation keeps getting coddled more and more. We don't know how to be tough anymore. We don't know how to support ourselves without anyone else's help. You can take help at times. But you need to be independent. And when you get to this point in life. Everyone says shut up and stop your bitch. And we're all doing the same goddamn thing. Shouldn't it be like this. There should be options in this world for us to enjoy and prosper in a work market that's continuously growing, different fields, new technologies. There's new positionings that are going to open every year for new things that we never dreamed of. But it's so hard. You don't see all these things as you're going through high school. You just focus, okay, this is kind of the degree I want. Let's go for it. And people switch their majors all the time when they get in high school because they just don't know what they really want to do. They're never allowed to thrive and flourish on what they love. They're never allowed to find things that they genuinely care about and that they want to be involved in. Some people do, but I'd say probably 50 to 75% of your graduating class 
does not know what they truly want to do out of high school. So we're all forced to get a job or go to school for something we don't want to do. They end up not doing it or you end up doing it and being miserable. They're like, there's not a win. A lot of people feel the same way I do. I'm sorry. I just had to come on here and vent this. I'm not depressed. I don't have anxiety. I just don't know how to find answers anymore. I don't know the right choices to make or how to satisfy my wants, my desires, and my needs. It's hard to balance in life, and I think we all learn this. Even our parents did it, but they never expressed this to us. Something we weren't taught in school to deal with. A lot of us don't know how to. We've been spoon fed. Not depressed. I don't have anxiety. These are not mental illnesses that we are dealing with when a lot of stuff happens. Some people really do have mental illnesses like depression to deal with when it's with stuff like this. But many of us self diagnose ourselves diagnose ourselves with depression because we don't know how to handle things and we feel like it cripples us. That is not that. This is a common thing that I am going through. That I have seen hundreds, if not thousands, of people go through without expressing it. I guess here I can already feel a weight lifted off my chest from just saying this because I don't have anyone to say it to. Like, I don't feel like I should say it to anyone. This helps me out a lot. And I hope, I don't even know how long I've been rambling. Probably 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I just hope I can help someone if someone decides to listen to this. So they don't feel like they're alone in this. Like every other cliche video you see on the internet about you're not alone, we can do this. You're not alone. You're not the only person who feels like you're depressed, but you're not depressed and you know it. You're not the only person who feels like you're torn between life and work. You're not the only person out there looking for answers that you feel that you don't have or you don't have the resources to find. There are other people in your hole. And we're all making excuses. And some of us aren't. We're trying to find them. We just need to all find a way to look and find them together. I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer to my situation. Do I go home or do I stay with a job? Or hope they both collide at some point. So at this point I'm going to end the video. I want to say thank you for anyone who might find this video. I don't think, but maybe one other person ever will. They'll see how long it is and probably go away. But if you stuck around and you watched all this. Thank you for watching. This is pretty much a video diary. That I am willing to share with the world if someone decides to stumble upon it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for hearing me out. I hope I was able to help you feel like you're not alone. Convey the feelings that you have or help you see a different light on something. Maybe that's what you came here to see if you decided to. But thank you. I hope you have a great day. And maybe I'll be back one day of the event again or tell you how things come out. Thank you.